All right, so let's take a look now at the, uh, that client, right, that, uh, that service that we just uh, wrote, right, that receives posts and puts and deletes. Now let's look at it from the standpoint of the, um, of the client. Right? So same architecture, but now we're going to focus on two, two different uh, modules here. Uh, we looked at already the, 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 uh, the, the behavior between the REST controller and the Java repository. Let's look, let's look at now the communication between the REST client and the REST controller. Uh, so, so the communication between the two is that all those posts, puts, and deletes right, are going to be programmatically generated from a React REST client going to send all those posts, puts, and deletes. Right? Whenever we, uh, from, uh, from, our, from our UI, right, as, we, as we interact and clicking uh, buttons here and there, we'll generate these, these, uh, these events, and we'll call these functions on this client here, and it'll generate the, the, the uh, HTTP uh, AJAX calls to the controller. So the implementation might look something like this. Right? Still using the, uh, the, the, the single instance, Singleton uh, for the service, right? Which you, you have, uh, you're probably overall using that same uh, template. Right? So we create a, a, a static instance here, uh, and then inside we declare a whole bunch of functions that uh, that wrap the uh, the data access communication to the uh, to the service, right? So presumably you have already implemented these two. Right? You should already have a find x by id, right? Or find all y's. X, Y, and Zs, right, from, from whatever you worked on in previous uh, sprints. Right, so you, you might already have that, right, and these, uh, these respond with a, with a they're, they're all asynchronous, and they all respond with, uh, with promises, and they all par uh, parse the JSON object back from the, from the, from the server. So what we're going to do with this, uh, this uh, sprint is we're going to add uh, implementations for create, update, and delete, right? Uh, and they would look something like this. For instance, the create, um, we are we're going to take in a uh, the ob an instance of the object that we want to create. Right? And notice what I'm doing here. I'm removing the ID. I am removing the ID before I send it to the server. If I leave the ID, the server is going to interpret this as an as an update. Okay? It's going to a if a if a record already exists with this ID. Right? It'll update that record. Right? But you might say, well, why is there an ID if you're creating it brand new? Well, it might be that in your UI, right, you're creating a whole bunch of things brand new, uh, but, but then you do a, maybe an, uh, 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 an edit, edit an existing record. Right? And in memory, in your React component, you might, have, you might be keeping track of that ID of that record that you were editing just a minute ago. Yes? And, uh, and when you then want to create a brand new object, that ID might still be in that state. Okay? So I want to make sure that I am removing right, any IDs before I send it to the server right, so, that the, so that the server doesn't get confused and say, oh, you're updating an existing record as opposed to creating a brand new one. Okay? Uh, all right, so, so uh, we are programmatically hitting that API slash quotes. We are programmatically saying that this is a post, it's a brand new object, we are converting the quote object into a string representation, into a JSON string. Uh, we are telling the server to interpret this string as, an, as a JSON object. Right? It's not just any string, it's, it's formatted as a JSON object. And this goes out, out to, the, uh, to the server asynchronously. At some point, the server, when it responds, it will, 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 you know, will notify us, and so we can parse out the, uh, the whatever the response it was and convert it into a JSON representation. Okay. Also notice here that this is in a curly bracket. See that it's inside of a curly bracket? Okay. Uh, and notice that uh, that fetch has an explicit return. You see that? Right. Uh, you might ask, well, why are we doing that and not doing the return here? Yeah, they, all these finders are also returning. Right, but if they're using a syntactic sugar in, um, in ES6, uh, in the new version of JavaScript, that here, the fetch is an implied return. It's an implied return. Notice that there's no curly bracket. So it mean, and this is the only function that be, is being called. Right, so the syntactic sugar 
behaves as, a, as this were a, a, an implicit return. If I would put here a, a, a curly bracket, curly bracket, then I don't get that uh, a, a, a implicit return. I would have to explicitly do the return instead. <coughs> Make sense? And the only reason, uh, the only reason here I'm not doing that is that because I have two lines of code. First, I'm de deleting the quote, uh, the ID, and then I am doing the fetch. That's the that's the reason. I, uh, we 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 have that right. Notice that in the update, I don't have an explicit return. Yes, because again, it's only one line of code. Uh, that fetch sends a uh, sends a put sends a put. String, stringifies the JSON object that's going out. It's uh, it's configured as an um, as a uh, as a JSON application JSON format, and then and then uh, uh, returns the uh, the promise back to whoever called this. So there's an implicit return here, no curly brackets. Okay. Same thing for the delete, right? Not, there's a, it's the only function invocation. Uh, this one doesn't even. This does, I don't need to return anything since this uh, delete doesn't return any. You know, other than saying you know success, success. I was able to delete it. There's no object being passed around. Everybody okay? All right. 